Welcome back friends. So today we're gonna go ahead and flush the coolant out on the Jeep. And before we get into that, I just wanna explain why uh, essentially the Jeep is running hot still. So in previous videos, we went through this whole process of trying to keep the Jeep cool, trying to cool it back down, back to factory specs. I'm not trying to get below uh, the 210 mark because that's where the Jeep's designed to run at. I'm not trying to run at 180 or anything like that. I'm just trying to run it at its factory operating temperature. That's what I wanna do. So we're trying to keep it there. Uh, the issue I'm experiencing right now is running down the road, idling, everything works perfectly until you turn the AC on. Once you turn the AC on, whether you're idling in one spot or running down the highway, the temperature starts to climb. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that is, but I just found something that kind of gives me a clue. Okay, so let's take this empty water bottle here and just grab a sample and see what happens. Now, this coolant should be yellow. I run Xurex uh, something or another, but you can get it from most hardware stores or uh, automotive stores, but it should be bright yellow. And that is definitely not, definitely not yellow. And I don't know if you can see the sediment in there, but there is a whole lot of specks going on within there. And that is not what we want. Just in that little tiny drain, we got a lot of sediment. It almost looks like sand, to be honest, which I don't understand how that would get in there. I don't understand how the sand get in there, although I do have a sneaky suspicion. That is essentially the overflow tube. If you have too much coolant coming in here, it'll push it out here, and it's just open. So I think in really dusty environments, Moab, Death Valley, uh, any of those areas, um, I think I'm getting a lot of dirt up in here, which by conjunction is getting into the coolant, which gets it into the radiator. So I might have to figure out how to make some sort of dirt sock. But that coolant should be bright yellow, almost clear, and it's definitely not. It's definitely really, really dirty, as you just saw. So let's go ahead and uh, let's start draining it, I guess, and get rid of this stuff. Hopefully you can see in there. So that's the top of the radiator core, and it does not look super clean. We're currently draining everything out. Everything over there is draining on the other Jeep. This is the 2004 Rubicon that I mentioned. I thought we should take a look at what this coolant looks like so you can see the color difference and just how clear it is. Hopefully you can see that. I'm gonna lighten you up here a little bit. But that coolant is a lot clearer. Obviously it's a different color. This is running Mopar coolant and the other vehicle, um, my vehicle, is not. My vehicle is running the aftermarket coolant. So I don't know if that actually has anything to do with it, but uh, this Jeep runs perfectly fine. Everything is very clean. You can see the coolant there is nice and orange or um, pink, whatever the Mopar color is. And it doesn't look dirty at all. All right, here we are. We've got most of the coolant out of the system, uh, at least everything that could drain out on its own. So I went ahead and replaced the buckets. So then we have a different bucket under that's completely empty. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting water through here and just letting it flow through the system. I wanna get all the coolant out of here entirely. And to do that, we're gonna to have to put water in a few different spots, but I wanna capture it all. Once I have all the coolant completely out of the system, then we can go through with just flushing and just putting the water right on the ground since uh, it'll be just water at that point. So, just gonna go ahead and spray this in here and get myself wet. We have the water turned off here. So uh, basically all the coolant for the most part is out of the engine block and out of the radiator. And we know that. The next part is getting the coolant out of the heater core. Now let's see if we can pull off this hose. Yep, there we go, got it, okay. So let's get this one back into position. There we go. And then, uh, yeah. We're just gonna take our little nozzle and poke it down in here and away we go. Alrighty, so our whole system is drained. There should be no more coolant in it. I run the water through for a while. I have two five gallon buckets full of the coolant and uh, the water was very, very clear coming out. So I'm pretty confident there's no more coolant in the system, that it's just water and whatever junk is left in there. Now, I did get a third bucket and the reason I have a third empty bucket is I'm going to put it under the various places I'm gonna flush. So right now, I'm gonna pour water all through the radiator wherever I can get it. I'm gonna undo this upper radiator hose so I can spray in different directions. But the reason for the third 
bucket is to not capture coolant because again all the coolant is out so we don't have to worry about dumping water on the ground i just want to see if junk is coming out um, if I don't have a bucket or something under there to catch it, I won't know if junk is coming out and I won't know when to stop the flush or if I should continue the flush. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, I'm just going to start pushing water through the system. And the first place I'm going to do it is like here. I just kind of wedge these things in here and crack this guy and let it go. So I'm in the process of flushing this, right? I have this going here. So valve. you can see actually it is flushing junk every which way. This is why it's important to get this nozzle in every little thing you can and flush as many directions as you can. So next what I'm going to do is poke it back down in here and flush everything up in order to try to get whatever little junk like that is out of there. I'll show you. And that will look just like so. Hose stuck in here. I'm going to put my thumb on this guy and put my hand here and we're just forcing water every single direction we possibly can. All right, here is the water coming out of it. You can see it's not super clear. That's not coolant. That's just, uh, that's just junk. If you're now wondering why I'm standing on the side of the vehicle, it is because we did that lower, undid that lower radiator hose. And uh, if I stand in front, I'm gonna get completely soaked. I'm trying not to get completely drenched, so. I'm going to stand over here. Honestly, the best way to do this, and I've done this in the past, I just didn't do it now, is to wear flip-flops and swim trunks and just let yourself get utterly wrecked with water. I mean, it's really the only way to go, to be honest. Especially if it's 100 degrees outside, you know, play in the water and cool yourself down because it's really hard not to get yourself just completely soaked with water. That little nozzle works so well on TJ, you can just poke it all into all the little ports and kind of stab it and leave it in there while it runs, and you just let it go. Alright, so you can see in the bottom here, uh, all those black little flakes, that is what we keep getting out. Obviously, we're doing something right, the water is way more clear than it was, you can actually see the bottom of the bucket. Those are fairly big chunks that are down there, and they're all over the bottom of the bucket. And uh, yeah, that's just what we keep pulling out. So I guess we're just gonna keep flushing until that stop, until that stops coming out. That's all we really can do, I guess. We have flushed and flushed, flushed, and we flushed some more. So I put all the hoses back on, all the clamps are back on. I cleaned out the overflow bottle and we are going to fill this completely up with fresh water. Then we'll run it for a bit, get it warm, let it cool, and then drain it and flush it one more time and see what we get. So let's fill it up. Here it is, my little funnel system. This thing is wonderful. Actually, it's really, really wonderful for doing this. Even though we're filling it full of water, it's uh, really nice for coolant because you can put all your coolant here, all your antifreeze, you can burp the whole system, and you won't spill a drop doing it. All our stuff is together. Lower. I always forget to do the lower radiator hose, by the way. Countless times I have started something with a lower radiator hose partially on there and not the clamp tightened but okay we're all on there we're good to go let's start this sucker up and get water in it so it's many many hours later um actually this ended up working perfect for me because i had a pipe break in the backyard and so i had to dig to china and replace that. Anyway, everything is cool now. I went ahead and, and drained all the water that was in the system. The water that came out actually looked pretty good. Let me show you that. There's what came out. That's pretty clear. But I think just for, uh, I don't know, just because we can while we have everything open, we'll just flush it through one more time, uh, just a few minutes here and there and over there. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be ready to, to be ready to, to get on to my next bag of tricks, which is really, how do you get all that undistilled, not good water out of your system? Here is the trick. You need an air compressor and a rag. And essentially, we're just gonna blow compressed air through everything. Now, word of advice, if you do this, I recommend turning your compressor down if you have the ability to. You don't want too much air, uh, compressed air coming out of here. So I have mine set to about 25 PSI. I really don't wanna go too much higher than that. You just don't want the chance, taking the chance of blowing um, 
of, of blowing anything out, you know. Uh, these systems aren't under that much pressure. Uh, like 15 pounds is all they're rated for, or something like that. So you really, you really don't want to go throwing 100, 100 psi through here, because that's that's a sure way just to blow something out. Woo. And here we go. This is the last secret and trick I have for you. Essentially, what it's going to require is you to go to the store and get distilled water, which you have to get anyway because you need it in order to mix up your antifreeze, which you should be getting concentrate, honestly. It's way cheaper. When you buy 50-50, you're paying, you're paying more for just water. But uh, here we go. So what I'm going to do, well, let's, let's, let's talk about why I'm doing this, about to do this. Um, I'm going to hook this funnel up to every single hose and spot that I can get to, and I'm going to pour just straight distilled water in the system and let it run out. The reason I'm doing that is I'm trying to flush out as much of that city water as I can. I really don't want the minerals inside the block or the radiator or anything like that, and I'm trying to eliminate as many uh, potential issues. So uh, this funnel works really good for this because literally it just fits right inside these hoses like that. And I have the I have the pet cock on the bottom open. This this guy is the heater core, so he's actually just going to run straight onto the ground to begin with. And I buy like this might be overkill, but I think I buy like 8 of these at a time. And I'll run through just about I'll run through a lot of them. Okay, I think I'll do uh one more gallon here, and then that's probably good. And then we'll start mixing coolant. Now I mix a little heavier because there is water left in the engine block, no matter what you do about it. There's gonna be water left in the engine block. So I mix it a little heavier, and then, um, yeah, I go from there with a little tester. But before we do that, let's, let's keep going. Let's do one more gallon and get rid of this stuff, hopefully. All right, let's start this process of filling up. So on the TJs, they're known to get air stuck in weird places and it takes a little bit to get them out. Um, it's just, it's how these six cylinders are to be honest. So I actually like to start by filling the heater core first. And funny thing is, if you actually look down here where the uh, thermostat housing is, you'll be able to watch clear water come out. So when that starts, starts happening, you know you can stop here and throw the hose on there and um, yeah, you'll be good to go. Now this time I'm gonna try a little bit different method and see how it turns out. So, Whenever you drain coolant out of the engine block, there's still some residual in there, and that's why we did a lot of flushing first before we drained it on the ground, the water, I mean. Um, and with that, there's going to be some residual water in the block. They estimate about a gallon. I think this is about a three-gallon system. So if I put a uh, full concentrate bottle in there, that should be about 50-50 mix. And then if I top it off with a 50-50, we should be right about there. Um, I think anyway if not I can always pull a little out and make some adjustments but close to 50 50 is what we want we don't really want anything below but we do want at least 50 50 and a little over won't hurt so okay let's start this process and then Go with a little 50-50. Let's start it. Yeah, let's start it because it's definitely going to suck some of this stuff down. Did you get sprayed? I got sprayed. All right, so uh, this is just preliminary, and obviously that gauge could be completely off, but the system is still open. I'm still idling it to get all the air out. I still have the cap off, and I still have that funnel on. And we're running under 210, and I have the AC on. I think it's probably about 90 degrees outside, so I don't know. According to right now, it's doing pretty good. It's been running like this for 15 minutes, but we'll, we'll really have to get out and test it and see what it does uh, once I have all the air out of the system. All right, we are turned off. Went ahead and turned it off. I just, it's been running for like 20 minutes now and the temperature never, whoo, that is hot. The temperature never got above 210, so I don't know. But I just, uh, I flushed the, the reservoir out here, the overflow reservoir and 
put a good mixture of 50-50 in it. I think everything else is pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off and cap everything and shut everything up. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. All right, so there you have it. There is how you perform a pretty extensive uh, coolant flush on your vehicle if you really need to. Like my Jeep really needed it. That fluid in there was nasty. And that was only about eight months old. Um, wasn't very old. So something is getting in there or something loosened up in there uh, when I put the new coolant in. Um, yeah, anyway, tests show right now, as you saw, just that little tiny test. I had the AC running, no radiator cap on because I had that funnel. I was trying to purge the air out of the system. And it was running below 210, according to that little gauge. And uh, 210 is actually right smack dab in the middle, uh, a little bit to the left where it was. That's about 198, according to a scan gauge when I've, when I've done all these tests. Unfortunately, I could not really do a test. It's just not hot enough. It's about 90 degrees out here, but I really need it to be like 100 degrees uh, in baking in the sun for me to do a proper test like I've done in the past for you guys. Uh, I think also why I do that, I'm actually gonna do a side-by-side -side test on the green Jeep. We'll just do all at one video and I'll show you how well a stock Jeep that's been maintained can actually run and that the cooling system is not inadequate um, according to some people on the internet that claim that they are. So uh, we'll do all that, we'll do all that testing. We're just gonna wait for a nice hot day to do that and then we'll take care of that and hopefully, fingers crossed, that my cooling system is, um, that my cooling system has been fixed. I, I really hope it has. So with that, I need to go bury a hole like I mentioned. I, I had a pipe break and I need to go turn the water back on and bury it now. So uh, before it gets dark, before it gets dark, yeah. I need to go do that. Anyway, guys, I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.